Ontario opposition parties say today's Greenbelt report means the housing minister has to go. The minister, uh, Minister Clark, has to resign, and if he won't, he needs to be removed from cabinet immediately. For me, what has to happen most immediately is for the minister to step aside, or the premier to ask him to step aside, and for freezing of development. Ontario's Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing joins me now, Steve Clark. Minister Clark, welcome to the program. Thank you, Heather. You and the Premier, Minister Clark, still insist that you needed this Greenbelt land to meet the province's housing goals. And the Auditor General was clear in her conclusion, you did not. She reiterated that in an interview with me just now. So I'm wondering, to begin, why do you continue to maintain it was? Uh, the, the report that uh, states uh, quotes the uh, Housing Affordability Task Force, which was tabled uh, early uh, last year before the election. Lots has changed. Uh, the economy has changed. Uh, interest rates have changed. Uh, and the housing starts have uh, continued to change. So we looked at uh, the situation with Ontario with the amount of uh, new Canadians which are uh, are coming under the federal government's new immigration. We're now saying, and we've said for quite a while that we need a minimum of 1.5 million homes. So that's what we took to the, the people last June. And, and part of my mandate, as the report states, indicated that I was to develop this policy and bring it in very quickly. And I understand. I, I, I understand the concern. Uh, it's unprecedented for a premier to respond directly to the Auditor General report, but I was proud to, to stand with the premier. Uh, and, and respond and indicate that we recognize that the process uh, was flawed, that it was too fast. We recognize the suggestions uh, in the 14 recommendations that are process related. And both the Premier and I are committed to ensuring that we act quickly uh, on those 14 recommendations to get okay. it right. We need uh, a, we're going to talk about to, all of those, if you don't mind, Minister deal. Clark, in a little bit more detail. Sure. But again, as you as you say, you were proud to stand beside the Premier today, and you did make repeatedly uh, the point that this was to address the urgent housing situation in Ontario, and you cited the Housing Affordability Task Force. That wasn't the only information, though. Chief planners in a number of regions all said Greenbelt land was not needed. And even just a month before this policy changed, your own ministry indicated you'd already allocated all 1.5 million units that you had targeted before the policy changed. So again, I wonder, how do you continue to dismiss all of the information, which is from, again, within your own ministry in some cases? You're better in math than I am, Heather. So the last two years, last year, we had 96,000 housing starts. The year before, one of the highest we've had since the early 80s, we had almost 100,000 starts. 100,000 starts or 96,000 starts times 10 isn't going to get us to our 1.5 million. And we're using the 1.5 million as a minimum target. With the amount of new Canadians coming um, to our province, we need to do everything we can. And when we came and, and we were re-elected last summer, we made a very, very clear commitment to Ontarians that we would put a plan in place and we would have a housing supply action plan uh, each and every year. You can do two things. In the middle of a housing crisis, you can build or you cannot build. Our government's decided to build. But in saying that... If this that, is, though, about creating housing spaces, why then are there no firm guarantees that construction is going to begin on these lands by 2025, no later than 2025? No framework in place we, yet. We have a, a nonpartisan uh, organization, the Provincial Land and Development Facilitator, that will be charged with working with the landowners and municipalities to ensure that uh, those community benefits, things like roads and transit, parks, uh, healthcare facilities, long-term care facilities, and the housing, including nonprofit housing, are built by the guidelines that the government has set forward. I have complete confidence um, that the land, uh, provincial land and development facilitator We'll work with municipalities to get that done, to, to get shovels in the ground, and also get those billions of dollars of community benefits moving forward. Um, you know, it's, it's very important that, uh, that we continue to move forward in the middle of a housing supply crisis, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what we've done. But at the same time, realize that we can have a, a better, more transparent, uh, and more open uh, process, uh, and we accept the Auditor General's 
recommendations, the 14 recommendations that focus on that. I'm committed as minister to make sure that that happens. But there is no commitment to what is to many the key recommendation. And that is namely to revisit the land swaps in the first place and to possibly reverse the decision. Why will you not examine that? Well, we, we don't accept not building houses in a housing supply crisis. We commit to uh, continuing to work through with our municipal partners. You, you mentioned the housing pledges. We're going to continue to to help them meet the goals. We've committed to Ontarians that a, a re-elected government under the leadership of Premier Ford, we'd have a housing supply action plan. And, and Heather, we've got a generation of Ontarians that are being pushed farther and farther and farther out of the market. Our government uh, can, can make two choices. We can either not build or build, and we've chose the latter. Okay. The Ontario Auditor General, again, coming back to her, you said you accept her, her take on the process. She says that you ought to have known what your chief of staff was doing, his activities all through uh, her report. And I'm wondering, even to go beyond that, uh, should you have known, and I think many would wonder, how could you not have known? Uh, the process uh, that uh, the Auditor General outlines in her report, um, I recognize was too fast, was too flawed, needs to be fixed. I was unequivocal of when I did know. The report states very clearly when I did know uh, at the end of October, recommended to Cabinet, and Cabinet made the decision a week later uh, regarding these properties. Uh, you know, again, uh, some of her recommendations have been referred to the Integrity Commissioner. My Myself and my staff continue uh, to work with and cooperate with the Integrity Commissioner in his investigation. But I, I, want, uh, I want people in our province to understand that we are committed uh, to taking the recommendations out of this report and implement them as, as soon as we can. It's very, very important. The process matters. Opposition parties, as you perhaps know, are calling for you to be removed from Cabinet. Uh, that you might not have control over, but they're also calling for your resignation. Will you resign as a result of this? I appreciate the support the Premier gave me today, not just at the press conference, but uh, you know, in, in terms of implementing the recommendations from the report. Uh, I think it's very important that uh, myself and my team uh, continue to show confidence in moving forward with uh, uh, what's been recommended to be changed. Uh, I'm unequivocal in wanting those changes to be made as soon as possible. Minister Clark, thank you very much for your time tonight.